done. What? Huh? Ah! Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about Ralph Bakshi. From the 60s to the 80s, he was one of the few animation directors that insisted animation shouldn't just be for kids. In fact, some should be explicitly for adults. This resulted in him making films that often gained critical and even box office success. Most of the time, these movies were weird, political, raunchy, and usually in bad taste. Bakshi himself also gained a reputation as being weird, political, raunchy, and usually in bad taste, usually splitting people's opinion of him. Some say he's a genius, others say he's mad, I say he's a mad genius. Yes, the madness can overshadow the genius, but the genius can also overshadow the madness. And since his passing recently, I figure it only makes sense to look at his greatest work, American Pop. So in loving memory of one of our greatest animation legends, I give you a Hello? He's not dead? I could have sworn I heard that somewhere. What? He's coming over here? Oh hell no, you keep that loon away from me! You lazy asshole! Oh, 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 stop it! Stop it! Oh, you need to fight the crypto fascist system of the man by throwing big titted ladies in blackface and waving around bananas, you know, which represent our economic downfall. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about the... Here, have a puppy! Ow! Ow! Look, I kinda thought you weren't alive, meaning I could praise your genius without having to actually deal with you. Stop sucking my cock, critic, and talk about something really interesting. Like what? Like the last feature film I ever made's... Cool. One of your biggest cinematic disasters. It was critically panned, bombed like crazy, it didn't even really get a big cult following like your other films. Yeah, but critic, it's important to understand your failures. Isn't that what the show is about? Through recognizing our mistakes and missteps, we can discover how not to fall into the same traps. It also helps us appreciate when we overcome these challenges, as well as give an idea of what the artist originally had in mind. Wow, that's actually kind of profound. Have I mentioned how many producers I've punched in the face lately? Well, nevertheless, you have a good point. Yeah, more producers need to be beaten. No! Maybe. I'm talking about reviewing Cool World. Analyzing how it didn't work, why it didn't work, and how it wasn't necessarily a great director's fault. Hey, did you ever see the movie I made for kids and then swearing gore and Nazi propaganda? It's a family picture. Uh, pray for me, guys. This is Cool World. So nothing says cool, risque, and badass like 1945's Nirvana. The Lindy Hop could not be contained. As World War II vet Frank, played by Brad Pitt, returns home to his mother. And he has the perfect surprise for an aging woman in her 40s. A motorcycle! Are you ready? We're going for a ride. Oh, no. No, I have to Ma finish come on, dinner. Come on, ride. Come on, let's go riding 10 miles per hour in the middle of the desert in my best suit. We'll go down to the hottest spot in town, the gambling casino. Right next to the drinking bar. But a drunk couple are driving recklessly on the road and crash into Frank and his mom. Oh, no, not that couple. This one. One, two, three. Frank for a minute thinks he's back in the war until he realizes it's very unlikely his mother enlisted. Uh, at least the bike's okay. Don't ride motorcycles. This PSA brought to you by Canadian Broadcasting. I knew it! They're so sneaky! <laughs> yeah! Well, it works. My spike works. Boy, if you started watching this movie with no idea what it's about, that would be totally out of left field, wouldn't it? I wonder what's gonna happen. Maybe he'll get revenge on the driver, or it's how he re-enlists to distract from the pain, or... Oh, bother. Dr. Wily creates Brad Pittman. You're not real. 
We may not be real to you as yet, but we will be. Just as Frank is wondering why he's in a different movie, presumably called Who Plagiarized Roger Rabbit, we cut a mere 47 years later where a prisoner named Jack, played by Gabriel Byrne, is getting dragged into his cartoons. <laughs> Wow, the alternate ending to Shawshank Redemption is much more classic Stephen King. <laughs> Thus he's given his introduction not only to Cool World, but to Hollywood, played by Kim Basinger. My god, I've created anime. Man, this guy knows all the smooth moves, doesn't he? He's doing the classic put boob here technique. But Jack is... Immediately sent back! I guess Holly just wanted to ask if her body was as impractical as Jessica Rabbit's? As we see, 47 years have been pretty kind to Brad Pitt! Actually, who am I kidding? They fucking have! But he's angry because Holly apparently brought a human, or Noid as they call them, into their world. Rumor has it, Holly, that you had a Noid visitation at the Slash Club last night. Don't you know what they do to pizzas? You're just a regular true believer in law and order, huh? Being it, Kappa. We're gambling on Feifel's ransom. And by the way, if you think some of these animated sections seem random, check the rating on the What the piss -a meter with these scenes during their chat. You could help me. <laughs> Ghost of Spuds McKenzie does not approve. Get a load of this one. Don't you see? They're real. They really taste it. And when they do it with a man. Oh. So, Ralph. Yeah, what? First of all, what are you eating? An eyeball and mustard sandwich, of course. No, of course. Second, what's with the random bits of animation not tying into anything? Oh, well, originally we were going to have all sorts of cool stuff, but then the studio got involved, and next thing you know, we didn't even have a script. So, with nothing to do, I was just like, hey, friends, uh,. Just draw some random shit and we'll just toss it on the screen somewhere. Yeah, but some of those animations aren't even finished. In fact, you actually played this animation twice in the same scene! Literally drawing attention to the problem! Did you think showing it twice was somehow completed? Hey, I wanted to show the studio what happens when you mess with an artist's vision. You have a bad movie with your name on it. And get paid for it. I can't tell if you're my hero or the worst kind of crazy. Can it be both? So while enduring the side cartoons you see in Mad Magazine, it looks like Jack is let out of prison and he goes to a comic shop where he sees his comic Cool World is being sold. And if I had a nickel for every comic shop employee who looked like this. I mean, I know people, friends of mine, who want to be Hollywood when they grow up. When they grow up? How old are your friends? Five? I always wanted to be a personality-less shell. But we find out a little more about why he was in jail. Why don't you do a book on that guy you murdered? You know, that guy you found in bed with your wife? Whoa. Well, uh, that's a big development. Holy smokes, one of our main characters is a killer. Well, I wonder where they're gonna take this. Right out the door! That's where they take it, right out the goddamn door! Our hero is apparently a murderer who, judging by the picture on his book, was not in jail very long. And it's never referenced again, and we're supposed to just sympathize with him when he goes back to Cool World. Which also has no explanation on how that's happening. You know, maybe it's supposed to be like one of those deep character studies where you're not supposed to know if he did it or not. I mean, after all, they do give him a lot of deep writing, like... My dreaming. And... Yeah. And... I drew you. And... Yeah. Not forgetting... What? Okay, was this dude charged by the letter? Why are his lines so short? We can't even get to know this guy because he has as much dialogue as Gromit. In fact, Gromit has more personality than this guy ever has, and he never says a word! But then again, maybe that's good when you do hear the dialogue they actually have in this. What'd you do that for? Because I dig you. To be fair, if I had to say lines like this, I'd kill someone too. So while he indulges the nightmare at Elm Street babies, Frank stops by, um, Black Hair Holly. Word is you got a thing for noise. Tough guy. <laughs> All right, where you want to go? Uh, movies? Amazing how well that syncs up, isn't it? How big did he think she was when filming this? She'd have to be stretched out like a squash wily e. coyote to match that push. Hey boys, we gotta go. But he gets interrupted and has to head out. So their car suddenly turns into a cartoon. Okay, Ralph. 
Why are sometimes things animated and then other times they're three dimensions? Like the car or the cardboard cutouts. Why does everybody call my characters that? I mean the actual cardboard cutouts. Oh, see, I wanted it to be like a live action painting. You see, that's what I did for years and years. Paint! And I wanted to transform the lights and shadows of my work into a more physical dimension. In fact, originally I was gonna call it Background, the movie. You just don't understand, Chris. Yeah. He's showing the anguish of our utilitarian world, colliding with the abstract of untapped potential. With boobies! Where the hell did you come from, follow-up question? Who the hell are you? I'm Julie Taymor, director of countless Broadway hits and kind of good movies. She helped me escape. Oh, okay. So what the fuck do you mean escape? Oh, escape. Don't you know we were in the Institute for the Artistically Insane? Oh my god, I've heard of that. That's where artists go when their ideas stop obeying logic and reason. I don't know why I was there. Having Bono do Spider-Man Turn of the Dark killed! Literally. It literally killed. Hey, you can't make an omelet without breaking some heads, yo. That's true. Yeah, you just don't get us, critic. Oh god, Spike Lee. Can you believe they put me in there? After I directed 65 projects and at least one third of them was watchable? That's why I love you guys. You understand me! And the struggle! Which is real! His work is about the oppression of blacks against whites, as told through an animated backdrop of color and no color, right? Yeah, with boobies. Well, at least nobody else escaped. Oh, well, there was that one guy who almost got away, but they caught him just in time. But I had two hit movies back to back. Don't worry about it, just get yourself nominated for another Oscar and they'll forget about all the horrible things you've done. So Holly takes Jack to her club. Jesus, even their cars are giving me hard. But Frank stops him and explains, poorly, what's going on? I'm a cartoonist, I drew all this. This place exists with or without you. You believe me, right? I'm not one of your creations. Oh, now everything makes sense. Thanks for clearing that up. We don't need any more information beyond that. That's like God coming out and saying, I created the cosmos and the universe. All except for Sweden. I don't know where that came from. Oh well, I'll just accept it. Sweden. Ordinary fountain, right? Around here this can be a big nuisance. <laughs> kind of like our foreground. One should be careful how they wave this thing. No, I don't get it. Of course you don't get it, because you're a wackadoo. Hey, that is our word! He also explains that in this world of cartoons, or doodles, there's only one law. Noids do not have sex with doodles. I think she's got a thing for you, don't you? The truth is, she's been after me and every other Noid who's come through here. It's just that no one's been insane enough to get involved with her. I somehow doubt that. Have you seen DeviantArt? Getting involved with her is not the craziest thing compared to others. So Jack is dropped off back home, resulting in him driving to the desert to pace. Oh, well, that was worth a whole shooting day. Back to where we just were. <laughs> Thank God we had that essential 26 seconds of him being in the real world. Now we can go back to exactly the same place we were. Why don't they just call this scenes? Scenes world. So after, I don't know, something stupid, Frank goes back to Holly's place. Do you think she'll let us in? Well, it is one of only two places he goes in this city, so I would hope so. He goes up to Holly to say pretty much the same thing he always says. You stay away from the Noid. Yeah, that's like 90% of your dialogue. You're totally on repeat. You're the mother-daughter scenes from the room. We heard you once. The other 70 gajillion times aren't needed. Be content with the cards you've been dealt. Will you prance around here waving that gun around like you're some big deal? Wait, wait, hold on. Is anyone even listening to us? Or are you too distracted by the background? I know you can chew the scenery, but what do you do when the scenery chews you? But Holly, of course, has Jack hidden and definitely has plans to feel the burn. But not before a lot of persuading. Can't go any further than this, Holly. Are you gonna follow the rules? No. Or are you gonna follow your instincts? Yeah. Persuading over! I feel like I'm getting an STD just watching this. Oh, no wonder you weren't supposed to fuck a doodle. Apparently they explode. Blowjobs blow up. But it's all good, because we have this incredibly funny line to end on. Mm, was it good for you? It wasn't what I expected. The movie in a nutshell. Frank, a 
again goes to visit his girlfriend. Is this police route like one line in between two places? Where he once again makes awkward chit chat. Tough night. Now that's a sensual massage. I call this the almost puppet mouth. We also see that having sex with Annoyed results in the doodle becoming Annoyed herself. Oh, I suddenly want to make terrible career choices, like being Fifty Shades Darker. She of course wants to go to the real world to see if that too looks like a lesser production of Pepe's Kids. And because exposition is apparently too expensive, they just transport again without ever explaining how. Okay, Ralph, they start off talking about this spike that's used to teleport people in between worlds. Yet it's never used again in any of these other teleportations. It just seems to happen whenever they want, and sometimes even when they don't want. How do you explain that? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I thought you wrote the script! Well, the original script, yeah. You see, I sold Paramount a hot R animated horror film mixed with live action because that kind of genre hadn't been done before. But on the first day of shooting, I was given a completely different script that was written in secret by two other writers. So literally from day one, I didn't know what I was doing because the movie I wrote wasn't the movie I fucking wrote. Holy smokes, no wonder so much of this isn't making sense. It actually happens more than you know. Yeah, producers change everything and we get all the blame. <sighs> when will people learn that the vision of the artist is all you need to make something brilliant? By the way, I love when you did Lord of the Rings, how you made Arrow Man, Arrow Man. Yeah, I just hit the letter S. <laughs> As you should. Well, that's nothing compared to how you did a torture scene in Drop Squad with Oreo cookies. <laughs> and dressed a woman like Aunt Jemima. Or how you dropped like a whole third of the story in Across the Universe. Nobody understood! They never do. I'm not sure it's a bad thing. So the two of them end up in a nightclub where we see Frank Sinatra Jr. figuring out the best way to fire his agent. Seriously, why did he take this cameo? That's my club. I'll answer that. Hey, she's with me! No, she's with us. Dude, what the hell kind of place is this? The price to go in is $20 and your girlfriend. Also, you don't get to go in. Holly poorly lip syncs as Sinatra Jr. is starting to look thankful nobody's ever gonna see this. While it looks like Frank has to go to the real world to get Holly back, so he kisses his girlfriend goodbye. While thinking about his mother? Thanks! Holly goes to find the spike that was mentioned in the opening, thinking it can combine their two worlds together because... THANGS! Well, Frank tries to figure out from Jack where she is. I'm taking you and the bimbo back. What are you gonna do, shoot me? Why don't you shoot me, goddammit! Don't try to have character now, there's like 20 minutes left. Jack agrees to take Frank to Holly while Holly is having some wacky comedic moments. Miss. I see you've played Idiot Seesaw before. Sure enough, she comes across the scientist who invented the spike and crossed over, dressed as... Little Dark Man. And he tells her that the spike is at the top of the casino, where Frank is waiting for her. Guess what? You're through. That was my attempt at humor. Hey, it's about as good as this. But as Holly starts changing into a doodle, she tries to use her ability to walk through the wall. Because that's something they could do in Cool World? I was hoping the sloppy editing that would jump cut people out of rooms would work for me too! Holly knocks him off the building, but thankfully he seems to be a puppet. Nevertheless, he turns into a splat pit. Jack, this is your chance to make it right. Do something right. He's fulfilling his destiny. He's becoming a hero. What? Ooh, isn't this where you put your audio commentary in the movie? Oh, you better believe it, doll. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the new screenplay I was just handed before shooting this scene, this was all about Jack becoming a hero. I don't get it either, but I made wizards. I I'm not saying that to impress you. I'm saying that to make myself feel better. You may now return to this bullshit. She eventually finds the spike. I am Shira. And unleashes the cool world on the real world. Wow, look at that. They went from Gabriel Byrne only having a few lines to just tossing him out of the movie altogether. 
Yeah, now he's a superhero trying to stop Holly from destroying the world. It's not even him doing the voice. Ha, you fiends trying to stop me. Half the time, the mouths don't even move when they talk. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Pencil dicks. <laughs> Well, this is a really nice Ren and Stimpy cartoon. Actually, it's not even that, but could we possibly return to the movie, you know, with conflict and such? Give me the spike, Jack. Okay, honey poo. Uh, goody, goody, goody. A trick! I must do what is right and return the spike. That was your conflict, huh? That was your big climax of the movie? And let me guess, there's just a bunch of yelling and screaming to follow? Yeah, okay. Ralph, I can't believe I'm asking this, but what was your original idea for this movie? The script that Paramount bought at first. Well, it was about a guy who had sex with a cartoon character. Okay, so it was crap. And then they gave birth to a psychopathic killer. Really? See, it was supposed to be about the child. Who grows up resenting his father because he abandoned him. So he goes into the real world, being half man and half cartoon, and tries to kill him. In the end, he discovers he's an abomination that can't live in either world. Wow. I mean, it sounds crazy, but it also kind of sounds deep. Exactly! I know my stuff is bonkers, but it comes from a place of real passion, before the studio gets in the way. Even Kim Basinger was trying to change it. Kim Basinger, really? Yeah, she wanted it more family friendly so she could show it to the kids she visited in the hospital. I says, Kim, that's a nice thought, but <laughs> this really isn't the sort of picture for that sort of thing. Uh, might I recommend uh, Fritz the Kid? So, instead of an animated psychological hard R horror film, we got. It's up to me to return the spike! The Jacked Up Adventures of Banana Man. Yeah, why do you think I rigged it so that Hollywood is the main villain destroying everything in the picture? That's actually clever. Was that intentional? I don't know. I mean, yeah! I don't know. I guess there's not really much else to talk about. The spike is returned and Frank's partner takes his body back to his girlfriend. In the most cautious way possible. Oh, Frank, honey, no, please! Oh, no, please! Was she a doodle when she aced him? When they get killed by a doodle, they become a doodle themselves. Ba -da -ba -ba. Oh my god! Uh, this is the director again. I'm looking at the script here I just received. Uh, yeah, I'm just an errand boy. So, happily whatever after, I guess. As Frank and his girlfriend can now doodle the noodle, and Jack's personality, I guess, is erased from existence as he stays the superhero pissing off Holly. Oh, we're going to be deliriously happy, honey poo. Pencil dick. And that was a thing. A very, very bad thing. Cool World has little to no focus and is amazingly sloppy in every category. Characters, story, technique, most of it either goes nowhere or falls awkwardly flat. But, I will defend it a little bit. As easy as it is to pick on, there is some amazing stuff. The animation is phenomenal. Except when it's not. The backgrounds are spectacular. Except when they're not. This is arguably Ralph Bakshi's best looking film, fill in the blank. I can't act like there's nothing here of value. Some of these visuals are jaw-droppingly inspired, and it's not fair to just bunch them together with everything else that doesn't work. So many of these images could be frozen and they'd be regarded as surreal masterworks. Even the animation has a wide range of styles. Disney, Looney Tunes, action comics, underground comics, and that really should be admired. So is it good? God no. But there is good stuff in it to open up the imagination. And you know what? I'm thankful for that, Bakshi. I'm thankful for all your insanity, even when it doesn't work. Because when you think that much outside the box, even when it doesn't succeed, it can still inspire people. All right, you three, back to the Institute with you. Well, crap it, pig. You'll never be able to stop us from filming our Bakshi crazy ideas. Yeah, because we have puppets. And big titty cartoons. <laughs> and brick dancing college students. Put your hoy help. 
Wait, I, this isn't right. Step aside, critic. They had a weird and stuff. I know, and it's not always good, but it's their madness and nobody else's. Films like Cool World show what happens when an artist's vision is bought and destroyed instead of coming to a compromise. Bakshi's films don't always make sense, but they're so strange and so unfiltered that it's impossible for them not to expand the creative part of one's imagination. We need failures that take risks to expand the mind as opposed to a failure like Cool World that's constantly limiting itself. Would Bakshi's original story have been better? Maybe. But it would be 100% his, appealing to a world with few rules as opposed to this world with a ton of rules which don't make any sense. Call me crazy, but I think they should be allowed to show all their madness and be as free as they want to be. And none of you are here right now, are you? God, I prattle on, so where'd you all go? I've lost him. Up here, you lazy asses! Screw logic! I'm gonna use Julie Taymor and Spike Lee as wings and soar to the cosmos! To titties and beyond! My god, that's the craziest, stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Yeah, man, it's better as soul. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and never lose track of the right kind of madness. Really fucking amazing. Of course you don't get it, because you're a wackadoo. Hey, Doug Walker here, once again doing the charity shoutout, and this week we're doing one that's an especially good one and uh, definitely very relevant now. It's Save the Children. Save the Children invests in childhood every day, in times of crisis and for our future. In the United States and around the world, they give children a healthy start, the opportunity to learn, and protection from harm. By transforming children's lives now, they change the course of their future and ours. They're committed to conducting programs and operations in a manner that keeps children safe and protects them from danger. Insisting on 100% accountability for safeguarding the children they are privileged enough to serve. All representatives, including employees, board members, partners, and volunteers, conduct themselves according to this commitment, with clear procedures to prevent, report, and respond to any risks to children. No matter the challenge, even through the devastation of Syria, they always put children first in everything they do. If you go to their website or their YouTube page, you can hear all the stories about the children they saved, and I will warn you, a lot of them are very tough to watch. They're very difficult to get through, but at the same time, it shows how important your donation is. Anything you can give is being used to save these lives, and under the worst circumstances you can imagine, they try to fight through and prevail. There are countless stories of how many children they've helped and saved, and you can be a part of it. Definitely check them out and see how you can help in such a troubling time. <laughs>